Have you ever wondered what it would feel like if your favorite childhood toy, seemingly out of nowhere, began ripping out the hair from your head and consuming it? This tale tells the horror-fueled nightmare in which Cabbage Patch Kids dolls consumed the hair of their young victims. Well, at least some of them. The nightmare began in 1995. The original manufacturer could not meet the high demand for Cabbage Patch Kids dolls and turned over its production responsibilities to toy manufacturing and entertainment company Mattel. Mattel was eager to innovate the brand even further and truly push the boundaries of their hottest toy on the market. Mattel had the seemingly innocent idea to make the then extremely popular Cabbage Patch Kids dolls even more realistic. By giving them a battery-powered motor, which was stored in the stomach, Mattel hoped to give the doll's jaw a robotic chewing motion, which young children could feed and care for. What Mattel didn't think about was that they were turning these lifeless dolls into hungry, eating machines. The dolls were put on the shelves in 1996 and named the Snack Time Doll. It was advertised as a new and improved version of the original Cabbage Patch Kids doll. The Snack Time doll came packaged with food-shaped plastic the children could feed to the doll. An empty stomach cavity was built in so the children could feed, empty it, and then feed these dolls over and over without the dolls getting full. These chubby-cheeked dolls had teeth, and as if this wasn't yet scary enough, some even had realistic tongues that moved in a back-and-forth motion as their jaws opened and closed. Mind you, these jaws also worked when objects other than the plastic food were put into them. Despite their rather creepy features, these dolls were the latest craze. A lot of parents had grown sick of the Cabbage Patch dolls as they were on every TV commercial imaginable. They were seen swimming, getting haircuts, and enjoying meals. These dolls really could do it all. So, when the Snack Time doll was released, it caught a lot of children's attention. Every 90s kid wanted a Snack Time doll. The dolls were in such high demand, they never stayed on shelves for long. They kicked up such a fuss over the cool new toy, parents were willing to turn feral. Parents reportedly started physical fights and riots with each other just to get their hands on this doll. If it meant their child would have something to entertain them for more than an hour or so, they would happily buy it for them. In that sense, it sounds kind of like a precursor to the iPad, doesn't it? As you've probably already imagined, there's a horrific twist to the story. After all the fuss and chaos, it was quickly discovered that fighting for this particular doll was like fighting for your spot in hell. These seemingly sweet and modern dolls were in almost every household that possessed a child. It was inevitable that young children would eventually get bored of feeding the doll just the plastic food. That's when children switched to something a little more realistic, and these malicious dolls seemed happier than ever with what they were getting. It started with real food being shoved into the dolls' mouths, but no one expected to find these dolls full of household objects. Pencils, keys, paper, and other small toys were found in the doll's stomach. Unfortunately, the Snack Time Kids doll's jaws were a little bit too strong to be a children's toy. The rollers inside the device, which were made by a number of tiny motors that couldn't reverse or stop if something got trapped, kept rolling until the object entered and exited the mouth successfully. Some dolls even turned cannibalistic. It wasn't long before complaints started piling up. There was one child in particular who fell victim to the insatiable appetite of the doll. Every time six-year-old Jessica turned her back on the doll, it seemed to reach out and consume her hair. Her doll acted like an electric fan, inhaling her hair whenever she got too close. Her doll would occasionally bite down on her fingers as she tried to retrieve whatever it was she had fed it. She could panic and rip her hand out of the doll's mouth, but she never wanted her mother to find out. That would have risked her mother taking her favorite doll away. Jessica's mother, Caroline, would soon notice the clumps of hair missing from her daughter's head. 
This made Caroline question whether her daughter was being tormented by children at school, possibly that she was doing it to herself out of frustration, but she would have never guessed it was her daughter's new toy that was to blame. It pulled on her hair until each strand was torn from her scalp. One evening, Caroline's family gathered around the table for dinner. It wasn't unusual for Jessica to bring her doll along too. Jessica propped her doll up in a high chair next to her. As her family ate, Jessica would sneak some of her food from her plate into the doll's mouth. Of course, this didn't go unnoticed. Caroline would calmly tell her, pretend dolls only eat pretend food. But Jessica wouldn't listen. As she continued shoveling her leftovers down her doll's throat, her mother became too irritated to respond. Jessica had reached over to pass her father her plate. As she did, her already tangled hair was pulled into the mouth of her Cabbage Patch Kids doll. At this moment, Caroline realized that it was the doll that had been tearing her daughter's hair. Struggling to free her, Caroline reached for the closest pair of scissors, resulting in an even bigger mess. As she was freed, the doll continued to make eerily realistic eating sounds as it chewed on her hair. The next day, Caroline took it upon herself to take her daughter to get a haircut, chopping off all of Jessica's hair before her doll would eat even more of it. Caroline placed the Cabbage Patch Kids doll out of sight and reach for the six-year-old Jessica and added to the endless amount of complaints. As other children tried to remove the objects from the doll's overly stuffed mouth, the motion of the tongue would put their hands even further down the doll's throat. This, mixing with the chewing motion, made it impossible for a child to free themselves from this saw-like contraption. Unfortunately, the motor was unable to be turned off until the stomach cavity was completely empty. These dolls would chew and grind their teeth on children's hands until their parents came to the rescue. Parents were shocked when their children came running to them with this doll hanging from their hand. The site was described as a pit bull clinging to their chew toy. This is how the Cabbage Patch Kids doll received the name the Cannibal Doll. Children's imaginations can be wild, but everyone was rightfully distressed. People no longer saw these dolls as a friendly toy. They were viewed as demonic, children-eating monsters who would stop at nothing to feast on your child's hair. Mattel was horrified with their creation. They offered $40 as a refund to 500,000 people who had purchased these dolls and they removed over 200,000 undistributed dolls from warehouses all over the world. Although they quickly issued refunds and apologized to thousands of families, the damage had already been done. This eating and drinking doll seemed like a great idea, but seeing as of recent years, even with better technology, no one has even thought about recreating a similar doll. I think that is evidence enough of how disastrous Mattel's creation turned out to be. Mattel's plan was to simply create a newer and more durable doll to add to the classic Cabbage Patch Kids doll collection, which they did. And it was a huge hit until everything went wrong. Although terrifying and controversial, these dolls became quite a prized possession for antique toy collectors. The horrific incidents that occurred made the dolls quite infamous, and getting your hands on one seemed nearly impossible, which is strange considering the disasters they had caused in the 90s. So, if you happen to find one of these dolls in your parents' attic or hidden away on a shelf somewhere, maybe even in the back of a charity store waiting for its next victim, you may be sitting on a generous amount of money. But is it really worth getting close to those cannibalistic creatures and risking a clump of your hair or even a finger? You decide, but I can confidently say nothing will ever convince me to sit face to face with a doll that is waiting for me to turn my back so it can pounce.